That's 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 it. Good understanding is going to give us good success. We will be successful when we understand. <laughs> so now let's look at this. We said Isaiah forty three, right? Yes. That was our text for all of last year. And let's read it. It says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now, this is critical. It was our text for all of last year. But it wasn't, the emphasis was not so much on finances. It was really on the fact that the church was being birthed and we all were having a kind of a new birth because it was a new church. But in this context, this is, I want you to think about the scripture now as it relates to your finances. In other words, God is going to cause us to, to, to look at uh, our finances differently. Amen? Amen. So that's the new thing. Now, 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 I'm seeing this. Look at this. I just said good understanding is going to bring good success, right? Look at the scripture again. He says, verse 19 especially. Who are both of them? 18, he says, remember not the former thing. Somebody say, forget about the old way. Forget about the old way. <clears throat> See that? He's saying, forget about the old way. And then in verse 19, he says, because I'm getting ready to teach you a new way. Look, behold, I'll do a new thing. Mm -hmm. In other words, be ready for a new way of thinking about your finances. He says, now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? Ah, there's that understanding. There it is, right there. He said, when I change the way you think about your finances, you're going to get new knowledge, new understanding. Shall you not know it? You're going you're gonna to have a new way of thinking. It's going to be new understanding. Now, here's the, here's the key thing that just hit me as I slow down. He said, because of the new understanding... Now look at the flow. He says, I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers of the desert. In other words, when you come and think about this thing the right way, and you come into this new understanding, we're going to see something that looks like a miracle. We're going to see God work with something that looked like it was nothing. I got one amen on that. Amen. <laughs> Did you see that? Amen. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness. In other words, with with our new understanding, <clears throat> what seemed like, because, you know, we would have to say right now, <laughs> how would you describe our, your finances? Some of us could say, my finances right now are, are a desert. <laughs> yeah. In other words, it's a dry place. <laughs> Come on now, you <laughs> somebody say, he's preaching now. Come on now. But, but did you just hear what he said? Yeah, yeah. He, used, he used a wilderness <laughs> And a desert as a, as a type of description of something that's dry and unfruitful. Yes. And God is saying, I can take something that's dry and unfruitful. He said, yes. and did you notice? He said, I. Yes. Did you see that? He said, I. Yes, so our understanding has to be now that it's kind of like what I've been talking about already this year. What we're going to see this year. Facts versus truth. The fact is, my finances are a dry place. The truth is, God can make a way in the wilderness. Did you see that? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Say, my my finances, my finances may be a dry place. May be a dry place. But I have a God who makes a rose bloom in the desert. Let's give God some praise. God can do it. God can do it. He can do it. But he does it based on faith. Yes. 
he does it, it's kind of like what we were what, what, what talking about in the Bible study yesterday. You know, how, how do I apply this word? How do I apply? How do I, how do I make this thing work? And what God is saying is, once you get good understanding, yeah. and you do it, and you, and, you, and you operate in faith, the way that I set up the principles, he says, I have to honor faith. Right. Without faith is what? Impossible to please God. So let's flip it. With faith, what's going to happen every time? You're going to please God. Say with me. Without faith, Without you do not please God. Do not please with faith, with you please God. You always without faith, you never please God. And with faith, you always please God. Without faith, you never please God. And with faith, you always please God. Without faith, you do not please God, and you do not get the reward. With faith, you always please God, and you always get the reward. So, seems to me, all we got to do is get the proper understanding of, of faith, of how to, how, to, how to do what God is telling us to do, understand what he's telling us to do, do what he's telling us to do, and just praise the Lord, and, and, and we're going to get the reward. Amen? Amen. I, I mean, this is it. Amen. Now, you said something else, and that was true, too. You said, you know, um, without faith, Nothing's going to happen, but with faith, all things are possible, right? Well, here's another scripture. Jeremiah 32 and 17. And it says, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched, and stretched out on, and there is nothing too hard or difficult for thee. So, 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 so really, <clears throat> Jeremiah 32, 17, really, you say, Pastor, I, I, I'm waiting on the, I'm waiting on the handouts, the, 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 the budget sheet, the financial tips, the savings, the you, you know, all that's going to be in this class, and that's coming. But the truth of the matter is, yeah, this is, this is a foundational section. And if we don't get this right, if, see, all right, if you go down to the airport, to one of the hotels at the airport, and you go to the, one of the financial enrichment seminars down there that they have all the time, or wherever, or out in Anaheim, or, you know, Anaheim Convention, wherever you got to be, L.A. Convention, mm. they'll tell you a lot of stuff, but they're not going to tell you about God. Mm. They're not. And we're the people of God. And, oh, I'm glad because I'm glad I'm teaching this right now. And I'm glad that this is going to be several weeks. Because what I'm going to teach you today is going to link up with this. Uh, today I'm going to be teaching you about the two systems. There's only two systems. And, 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 and so once we get this in our mind, what we're going to understand is, oh, this makes sense. Why we have to do it God's way? Because I'm in His. I'm not in the world system anymore. Yeah. You you got saved. You're not in. The, you're in the world. I I think when we quote this scripture, we don't really understand that. Uh -huh. We say I'm in the world, but I'm not in the world. <laughs> but I, I don't think we really understand what that means. We're in the world. We're in the earth, and we're and we're in the world in the sense that. There are things that are part of this world system that we have access to. You know, ATMs and, and, and bank accounts and all these other kinds of things. We have access to all the financial tools in the world system that anybody else does. But because of who you are, you are really not a part of that system. You're really not. And in order for you to receive what God wants you to receive, you're going to have to... I love what somebody said. They gave me another, defini another definition for faith. It was a good definition, I like it. They said that faith is... Faith is believing that what God 
has for you is greater than what the world can offer to you. Faith is believing that what God has for you is greater than what the world can offer you. Now, see, that's, that has to be faith because you can't see it. It's, it's not, it's not the, the tent. See, what the world offers you is all, everything you can see. You can see all that stuff, so it's like, ooh, look at that car. Ooh, look at that house. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, but faith is when you believe that what you can't see is greater than what you can see. Now, that's faith. It is. I come to church on Sunday because of faith. Love, too. But faith. I could be at home watching the game this morning. The, the, the 49ers are playing, but the 49ers ain't greater than Jesus and all the things I'm going to get this morning. Mm -hmm. yes. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Really? I, I, I'm, I'm just telling you, faith is when you believe that what God has to offer you is greater than what the world tries to offer. Now, let's look back at this. So, what I'm saying is, this whole thing has to have some strong spiritual foundation before we get into uh, a lot of uh, administrative things, okay? All right, so I gave you some foundational scriptures. Let me continue. Here's some more. Here's some more. Uh-huh. Oh, you have an usher meeting? <coughs> do what you got to do. Have them to uh, ask the spouses and friends to take notes. Spouses and friends, take notes for any ushers that have to go out. Thank you, sir. All right, another foundation of scripture, right? Deuteronomy 8 and 18. It reads, Deuteronomy 8 and 18, it reads, But thou shalt remember the Lord God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get well. <clears throat> Let me stop there for a second. Now that's a scripture that that verifies what I said about the four levels of true prosperity. Look what it said. It said you be, you better remember the Lord God. He's first. Okay. <laughs> then it says it is He that giveth thee the power to get well. Well, if you, if you lose your mind, that's the middle one. You can't get me well. See, you, you, you lose your mind, right? My, our daughter deals with, her job is dealing with mental illness every day. That's her job. She's a counselor for people who have mental illnesses. And, you know, every day she's dealing with folk that have lost their mind. I mean, we sit down there having dinner with her and she telling us about these people and I'm going to, Lord bless you, child, in the name of Jesus, your child. You know, I mean, folk that have talked about, oh, she got to be real prayed up. Folk that have talked about, well, you know, uh, Obama put a chip in my head. <laughs> Seriously. They lost their mind. God, do you know, do you know in the Bible that King Nebuchadnezzar lost his mind right. mm -hmm. and for a period of time, I don't know, for several years, he, he was going around on all fours like an animal eating the grass off the ground. His fingernails, kind of like how he was, his fingernails got long right. like, a, like, a, like, a, it's a, like a hawk or like a talons and he was just, hey, 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 he went around oh, like a fool. Like he lost his mind. Because yes. he, he did, he lost his mind. Because the Lord was not with 